Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Protests in London against Julian Assange's extradition. UN report sounds alarm on worsening climate change indicators. Rights groups demand reparations for migrant workers in Qatar. Israel approves provocative far-right flag march. Hundreds of supporters of Julian Assange in London on Tuesday, May 17, staged protests against his extradition to the US. The protests took place in front of the British Home Office. Protesters termed his extradition to the US as politically motivated and a grave threat to the freedom of the press. The protesters were seen carrying posters and banners as well as chanting slogans in support of Assange's release. His wife Stella and two children were also seen at the protest. His wife additionally also appealed publicly from the protest's platform to the British Home Office as well as the whole government to block the extradition. The decision to extradite Assange to the US now solely rests on the decision of the British Home Secretary Preeti Patel. Assange's legal team had time till Wednesday to give submissions to the Home Office explaining why he shouldn't be extradited. Stella also wrote on Twitter on Tuesday that a representation has already been filed with the Home Office. Assange had previously lost several legal appeals against his extradition. Britain's Westminster Magistrates Court issued a formal extradition order against him in April this year. Assange had been taking refuge from his extradition and prosecution since 2012 in the Ecuadorian Embassy in London. He is wanted by the US for alleged espionage crimes relating to national security. These include disclosing national defence information through the leaking of military documents. Some of these documents record U.S. war crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq as far back as 2007. One among these documents show video footage from a U.S. Apache helicopter capturing U.S. military shooting dead children and Reuters journalists in the streets of the Iraqi capital Baghdad in 2007. Assange was arrested by the British authorities in 2019 after the Ecuadorian government expelled him from the embassy in 2019. The United Nations on Wednesday, May 18, in a report warned that four key climate change indicators hit record highs in 2021. Sounding the warning, the UN blamed the global energy system for the drastic rise in the indicators. It also called on the world to accelerate its shift to green renewable energy to mitigate future effects. The report was compiled by the UN's World Meteorological Organization or WMO. The report was named The State of the Global Climate in 2021. It states that greenhouse gas concentrations, sea level rise, ocean heat and ocean acidification have all set record highs last year. As a result, the global temperature in 2021 was about 1.11 degrees Celsius higher than the pre-industrial level as per the report. It also stated that the last seven years have been the warmest in recorded history. The WMO report warns of the wide range of devastating effects these rising changes are going to have on the life on Earth. These include wiping out organisms, wildlife, ecosystems and coasts. These changes would also exacerbate global food insecurity, extreme weather events such as floods, heat waves, droughts and hurricanes. Millions will also be at risk of being displaced with their lives completely uprooted. Launching the report, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres talked about five steps that countries can take to speed up their transition to renewable energy. These include greater access to renewable energy and supplies and tripling of private and public investments in renewable energy. He also called for an end to fossil fuel subsidies, which he said amounted to 11 million US dollars per minute. Moving on to our third story. Several international human rights organizations and fans groups on Thursday, May 19, called upon International Football's governing body to pay reparations to abused migrant workers in Qatar. Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Football Supporters Europe and the trade union Building and Woodworkers International are among those called for reparations. They demand that FIFA pay those workers for 40 million US dollars for the human rights abuses and labor rights violations committed against the workers. Amnesty, in a statement, urged FIFA to work with the Qatari government to establish a comprehensive remediation program. 
It noted that the amount demanded by the groups is a very small fraction of the expected 6 billion US dollars revenues FIFA will earn from the 2022 World Cup. The groups also called on England football and coach Gareth Southgate to also support the initiative. They have noted the thousands of workers' deaths working at the construction sites of brand new stadiums. Many of these deaths have been attributed to terrible working conditions and extended working hours. They have also regularly denounced the lax safety measures and health standards under which these workers have been made to work. Other issues the workers have faced include unpaid wages, exorbitantly high recruitment fees, lack of compensation for injuries or deaths, and absence of any grievance redressal mechanisms. The groups have also criticized FIFA for failing to ensure protections and safeguards against exploitation and abuse of the migrant workers. FIFA in a statement said that it was assessing the proposals put forth by the groups. It added that it has introduced its own unprecedented due diligence process in relation to workers' protection. This includes a separate remediation mechanism in coordination with the Qatari Supreme Committee organizing the World Cup. This committee has reportedly already dispersed 22.6 million US dollars to workers by the end of 2021 to compensate for the high recruitment fees workers were forced to pay to recruitment agency FIFA claims. And finally, Israel's government on Wednesday, May 18, gave permission to far-right ultranationalist Jewish groups to stage a controversial flag march in the Palestinian-majority old city of occupied East Jerusalem. The Israeli Minister of Public Security, Omar Barlev, approved the flag march to pass through the Damascus Gate or Bab al-Amud en route the Western Wall in the old city later this month. The flag march is scheduled to take place on May 29. The march is held every year and is organized to celebrate Israel's capture of occupied East Jerusalem in the 1967 Six-Day War. The march is staged under heavy protection of the Israeli security forces. It involves thousands of far-right and ultra-nationalist Israelis marching through the area, waving Israeli flags. They also sing racist anti-Palestinian songs, chant anti-Arab genocidal slogans such as Death to Arabs, as they pass by the Palestinian residents and shop owners. The provocative and incendiary slogans, songs and flag waving in the front of occupied Palestinians have over the years resulted in violence and clashes. Last year's march too resulted in intense clashes and fighting between Israeli marchers and Palestinian residents as a result of the hate-filled provocative nature of the march. Israeli forces are known to usually crack down brutally on the Palestinians protesting the march and its hateful and humiliating genocidal slogans and songs. The police also heavily protect the far-right Israeli marchers and no action is taken against them for the provocations. Reports have also noted that this year's march being even more risky and contentious due to the anger and outrage among Palestinians over the Israeli killing of Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. There have been many other instances of violence and brutal crackdowns on Palestinians by Israeli security forces as Israel tries to maintain and extend control of the area. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.